Hey friends. So welcome to our last lesson of the trigonometry unit. And for those of you who are with me at school, um, our last lesson of 20-1, this is how we wrap up the course. Um, now, before you get too excited, you have to remember there's still some things to do, like, you know, a trig test and a cumulative exam and a final exam. But this is the last physical note that we will be discussing together in this course. So congratulations on making it this far. And I know you'll make it all the way, so don't stress about that. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the ambiguous case of the sine line. Now, before I get into this too much, what does the word ambiguous mean? Um, ambiguous in the English language essentially means there's not enough information to say whether you're talking about this or whether you're talking about that. Uh, if I just randomly said, uh, some of you are going to groan at me, but that's okay. If I just randomly said, you look sick, uh, do I mean you look sick, like you're about to throw up? Or do I mean you look sick, like you look amazing? Um, I didn't give you enough of a context to tell you which one I meant. Uh, so that's what the word ambiguous means. There's not enough information to know exactly what we're talking about. In the ambiguous case of the tri of a triangle with a sine law, what happens is we give you information, um, but the information that we give you actually could form two different triangles. Okay, and so as we go through this note, um, you know, I'm gonna walk you through a bunch of scenarios and rules around if the height is, you know, this much in comparison to or if the sorry if the length is this much in comparison to the height you have the ambiguous case but if it's uh longer than than another side you you won't have the ambiguous case and you only have one triangle and and we can get all boggled down by those rules and and that's not the intent okay so to start off with i think what i'd like to do is just to walk you through the cases of the ambiguous case without actually doing any math, um, just to give you a visual, okay? Now, um, here is where we start thinking about the ambiguous case. We think about the ambiguous case when we are given a triangle and we know this angle and this side and this side, okay? When we've got that situation is when we need to start thinking about the ambiguous case. Here's the thing I want you to think about. Because this guy is not known, this angle up here, it actually allows for this length to be swingable, okay? So this length here can actually swing this way or out this way, and it might potentially make another triangle. You can kind of visualize with your eye, or if you can't visualize with your eye, you can visualize with this uh, diagram that I have that I'm, my head is probably hiding, so I'm just going to hide my head for a sec so you can see that diagram. Okay, but you can imagine that this line here might swing this way. It might actually end up being the same length, so I could swing it this way and form a different triangle over here. Okay, and so the ambiguous case comes from the fact that the information we give actually could create two different triangles. Okay, so I want to show you the rules visually before we get into the notes. So just let me switch my screen here for a sec. Um, I just need to go to right there. Okay, so here I have an example of a triangle. Okay, now some of you are going to laugh at that and say, well, it's not a triangle. You're right. But what I'm going to do is this is um, the side that I'm going to make longer and shorter so I can show you all the different cases. Okay, now the height of this triangle, if I could just get my ink on here for a sec, the height of this triangle would be located right here. I just drew that in, right? That's the height of that triangle. So we can see right now that this 3.1 length is shorter than the height of the triangle, okay? Um, okay, so when this side, the opposite of the 35, okay, when this side is shorter than the height, I don't get any triangle at all, okay? There would be zero solution. There's no way to form a triangle because this side is way too short. It can't come together to actually form a triangle, okay? Now, what happens if I make this the same length as my height? Okay, so if I extended this so that I'm the same length as my height, okay, so if I'm right, ah, my just a little bit longer, 
Okay, so you get the idea though. You can see that we're only gonna get one, um, one triangle that can form, okay? I can't get another one. I'm only gonna touch right there and I'd only get this one triangle. So when that side length is the exact same length as the height of the triangle, one triangle will form. There is still no ambiguous case, okay? Here's where it gets fun. If I make this just a little bigger, okay? Now, here's the trick, okay? I need to be bigger than the height. Remember the height was about 5.6 in this quick little diagram, right? So I need to be bigger than the height, but smaller than this other side that was given. That is the sweet spot for the ambiguous case, because look what happens. I can make a triangle right here, okay? Or I could swing this around and make a triangle right here, okay? That, is the ambiguous case. This whole note lies around this particular situation, okay? So, again, just to reiterate, this is when this length here, opposite of the angle that I was given, is longer than the height of the triangle, but shorter than that other side given. Now, obviously that begs the question from you, well, what happens if I make that longer than the side given? Well, let's do that. So if I make this guy longer than that 9.9, .9, you can see I'm just going to make it a little bit longer just to show you um, a better visual. So I can make back to one triangle, okay? One triangle right here. You see that if I swing it this way, I can't make another triangle, okay? Because it's too long. That's the difference there. So I'm back to just one triangle right there, okay? So just to review again, before I get into our note, uh, when I have smaller than the height, um, no triangle can be formed at all. When I am the height, which is roughly that 5.6 mark, when I am the height, one triangle can form. Uh, when I am in between the height, like I'm bigger than the height, but smaller than this other side I was given, that's when two triangles can be formed. That's the ambiguous case, okay? And then when I surpass that other side, I'm back down to one triangle here because I can't swing it around and make another triangle here. Okay. All right. Perfect. Now let's go back to our note. That essentially was your entire note. Um, but now we're actually going to take our time and go through it little by little. Okay. All right. So in triangle ABC, angle A is 30 degrees little a, so that's the side opposite angle a, right? Little a is 24 centimeters and b is 42 centimeters. Determine the measures of the other sides and angles to the nearest whole number. So first thing I should do is draw a picture. So here I have my picture and I'm going to label everything that I know. Oh, I'm just going to hide my head just for those of you who don't have the book at home so you can see the full question. Okay. Um, so I'm going to label everything I know. And again, it's this one here because I don't know this angle up here that allows this side to be swingable. Okay. Um, okay. So let's check it out. The first thing I do is solve for sine B. Now this is just a direct review of what we did yesterday, right? Um, I have this pair, the 30 and the 24. Okay. Um, and then I have this length 42. So I'm going to use this pair here and this pair here to solve for angle B. So sine of 30 over 24 equals sine of B over 42. Um, I'll cross multiply. So sine of 30 degrees times 42 divided by 24 will give me what the sine of B is. And then I will arc sine or inverse sine uh, 0 0.875 to get B is 61 degrees. Now, now that I have B is 61 degrees, um, I can get C because I can go 180 minus 30 minus 61. And that will give me angle C to be 89 degrees. I could have asked you this question yesterday so far. There's nothing different, right? And then I'll get length C by doing another sine law. Uh, so sine of 30 degrees over 24. But this time I'll equal sine of 89 over length C. Cross multiply. So 24 times sine of 89 divided by sine of 30. And I get C is 48. Great. Perfect. No worries. Okay, but this is the thing. This is the same triangle, okay? Let me just go back for a sec. Take note, I had 30, opposite the 30 was 24, and then my other guy was 42. In the one I'm about to show you, all I'm doing, just like I did in that, um, that 
visual that I gave you at the beginning, I'm going to take this 24, 24 centimeters, sorry, and I'm going to swing it this way instead. And that would give me a triangle that looks like this. Well, how do I get B? Obviously, B is not the same thing as it was in the first triangle, right? But I would still use the sine law for it. I'd still go sine of 30 degrees over 24 is sine of B over 42. Okay. But this time, what I need to think about is that I'm looking at B's reference angle. I need to think of that right ratio as B's reference angle. So then when I arc sine it or I arc cos it, I'm still going to get that 61 degrees. But if it's a reference angle, then I think, oh, that could be actually in quadrant one or it could be in quadrant two. Okay. And how do I get the quadrant two answer? Well, that's 180 minus the reference angle. Okay. So if I did that, my new angle would actually end up being 119. So now I'm going to solve the rest of this triangle based on B being 119 instead of on B being the 61. Okay. Now, I just did that conversation using reference angles, knowing that sine is positive in quadrant one and in quadrant two. That's one way to get your alternate B. Um, another way to look at your alternate B is this. If I just put that original guy back, so let's say that was my 24 and this was my other triangle right there, okay? Um, what you would have to remember here is uh, this was 24 and this was 24, so this actually became an isosceles triangle. So if this is 61 degrees here, which is what I originally solved for, this would also be 61 degrees, okay? And then if you want to find this missing angle here, you know that these two have to add up to 180. So you would still end up going 180 minus 61. Okay. However you want to look at that, it doesn't matter to me. I just need you to be comfortable to get that 119. Okay. Okay. So now that I know B is 119, I'm going to find C by going 180 minus the 30 that I knew minus the 119 that I just solved for. Um, and that's going to give me 31 degrees. And then I do another sign law with C being 31 degrees to get side C down here. So I'll go sine of 30 degrees over 24 equals sine of 31 over little c, okay? And that would give me 25 degrees. I'm sorry, <laughs> 25 centimeters. I wasn't paying attention to my note. 25 centimeters, okay? So two different solutions from the same um, parameters that were given. So what just happened? Don't the two triangles have the exact same measures? How is it that we ended up with different results? I'm just going to hide my head for a second for those at home. This is called the ambiguous case of the sine law. This may occur. It doesn't always occur, but it may occur when you are asked to sketch a triangle and you're given two sides and an angle opposite one of those sides. So you're given essentially an SSA scenario. Let's analyze our triangles by looking at the height the opposite side length and the adjacent side length when the given angle is acute. Now, again, I just want to reiterate, I just showed you this at the beginning of our lesson together. So don't get bogged down by all the rules I'm about to show you and all the rules you're about to fill in. We went through this using the uh, GeoGebra example that I showed you at the beginning. Okay, here we go. So opposite side is smaller than the height. Well, you'll recall that from the beginning. Uh, there was no solution, okay? No solution there if the opposite side is smaller than the height. Okay, in the next one, opposite side equals the height. Well, then there was one solution, uh, one triangle that could be formed there, okay? Then we had that sweet spot. Opposite side was larger than the height, but smaller than the adjacent side. Okay, that's when, so in this example, I've got 11.7 as the stationary side length, and then I've got 8.7 as the one that I'm swinging. So I could have it this way, or I could swing it in and create a um, angle larger than 90 degrees there. Okay, so that is the ambiguous case right there. Okay, two solutions there. And then as soon as I get bigger, then the um, other side here, the opposite side is larger than the height and larger than the adjacent. We're just back to that one triangle that we can form one solution there, okay? Then opposite side larger and equal, 
just in case you were wondering about that. Uh, if it's equal, again, we only have one solution, and that actually ends up being an isosceles triangle. Okay. If I end up with an obtuse angle instead of an acute angle, okay, so everything we just did there, that A value was less than 90 degrees. If I have an obtuse angle, only one possible situation where we will receive a triangle, what would the length of A have to be? So that's the purple line here. I would want you to be comfortable to say that the length of A would need to be greater than the length of C, otherwise there wouldn't be any possible solution, right? In order for this guy to get down to this line here and form a triangle, A is going to have to be longer than whatever C is, okay? Awesome. Now, I keep telling you don't get bogged down by the rules. That's because even if you don't know exactly whether you have the ambiguous case or not, pretend that you do. What's going to happen is if you don't have the ambiguous case, the second case is going to fall apart really, really quick. You're going to end up with a negative angle or you're going to end up with something that's not possible or it will fall to pieces very, very quick. And then you're like, oh, I didn't have the ambiguous case. And then you move on with your life. OK, so don't I don't want this to be a stressful thing to you. Uh, so don't get bogged down. Don't get too bogged down with a bunch of rules. When in doubt, try it out. If the ambiguous case does not exist, your second answer will fall apart. Okay, so let's try another example. In triangle ABC, angle A is 39 degrees, little a is 14 centimeters, and C is 10 centimeters. Determine the measures of the other sides and angles to the nearest whole number. I'll just hide myself there for one sec so that you who don't have the book can see the question. Okay, all right, so we're gonna draw a picture. We've labeled everything we know, and we just, we're gonna go for it. Now, in this example, I know there's only one solution. Um, and the reason I know there's only one solution is because this 14 is bigger than the 10, right? So when that A value is larger than the C value, that's only going to be one solution. But even if you didn't know that, you could try to get your second solution and you would see very, very quickly that things fall apart, okay? So I know there's only one solution here because A is greater than C. And I'm going to go for the sine law again, uh, sine of 39 over 14, that's the pair I know equals sine of c over 10, cross multiply sine of 39 degrees times 10 divided by 14, and then inverse sine or arc sine, and I get c is 27 degrees. Now that I know c is 27 degrees, I can get angle b by going 180 minus 39 degrees minus 27 degrees, and b would be 114, and then I'll use another sine law to get a side b, uh, so I've got sine of 39 degrees over 14 equals sine of 14, 114 degrees over B. So 14 times sine of 114 uh, divided by sine of 39. And that gives me B is 20 centimeters. Okay. All right. Next example, I've got angle A is 39 degrees. A is 10 and C is 14. Okay. Now, um, let's just play with this for a sec. Again, if you didn't know, you could always just try it, but I'm going to play for a sec. If I wanted the height of this triangle, which would be right here, I would say that the sine of 39 is h over 14, which means h is 14 times the sine of 39, right? So if I went 14 times the sine of 39, I get 8.8. .8. So I know right away this is going to be the ambiguous case because 10 is larger than 8.8, .8, but smaller than that 14. Okay, so I know this will be the ambiguous case. I will have two different solutions here. Okay, um, so I'm just going to start with it. I'm going to do case one. So sine of 39 over 10 equals sine of C over 14. Sine 39 times 14 divided by 10 would give me sine C is 0 0.8810 arc sign that or inverse sign that, and you get C is 62 degrees, okay? Then I get angle B by going 180 minus the 62 minus the 39. That gives me 79 degrees for B. Do another sign law to get side B. So sine of 39 degrees over 10 equals sine of 79 degrees over B. And that gives me B is 16 centimeters. Now, that is all case one. Okay, then I do the whole thing again with case two. Now, 
for case two, I still get to this C equals 62 degrees, but that's that reference angle now, right? If I swing this the other way so that my picture looks like that, right? You could do it like this again. This is 62, this is 62. So now my actual angle that I want in this triangle ends up being 180 minus that 62, okay? So now I'm gonna say C2 for the second case uh, is 180 minus 62, which is 118 degrees. So now if C2 is 118 degrees, B2 will be uh, 180 minus the 39 minus the 118. So the angle B for the second case will be 23 degrees. And then I need to solve length B for the second case. Okay, so I'm setting up another sine law, sine of 39 degrees over 10 equals sine of 23 degrees, but now it's over the B value for the second case. That's why I'm calling it B subscript two there. And that's gonna be six centimeters, okay? So two different solution sets, one for each case. All right, good. In triangle ABC, I've got angle A is 124, A is one and C is two. So if I was to draw that out, that would look like this. I would want you to say right away, hey, hey, hold on, hold on. If this is obtuse, this guy has to be larger than this guy, right? I mean, even look at the drawing when that's an obtuse angle, you can see that this side has to be longer than this side. This is not possible. Um, the one centimeter is shorter than the two centimeters. So actually there is no triangle here, it can't form, okay? No solution, A is less than C. Now, maybe that conversation just completely stressed you out because you're like, how am I supposed to remember that? I don't remember all the rules. It's okay. You don't need to remember all the rules. Give it a shot, okay? If I was to go to solve this using the sine law, I would start, this is my pair, I would say sine of 124 degrees over one is sine of C over two. It would look like this, okay? And I would go sine of 124 degrees times two divided by one, and that would give me sine C is 1.65. Now at this stage, hopefully uh, you would say, oh, I can't do that because the ratio of sine, um, that has to be less than one. It has to be between negative one and one. But even if you didn't know that, you would arc sine and you'd get an error. So at this point, you couldn't be confident to say, nope, that's not gonna work. There is no solution for this, okay? All right, we got this, no solution. So. Here is your homework for those of you who are my kids at school. Um, congratulations on finishing the course. Um, well, finishing the lesson. Again, we're not finished the course yet. There's still lots to do over the next couple of weeks, but uh, uh, this is it for lessons. So please give yourself some time to do the homework. Give yourself the processing time you need with this, okay? Um, and as always, I am here for you. Um, I don't want you to feel you're doing this alone. Make sure you're asking me questions, okay? You got this, guys. Take care.